All right, you made it here to the personal umbrella video. You got through the auto video. That was a long one with a lot, lots of details. You got through the home video, which was another long one with a lots, lots and lots of details. Those were the heart of this series of this course. This personal umbrella video, super important, super important kind of policy and kind of coverage, but a lot shorter, a lot simpler. Uh, we're gonna get take this one taken care of pretty quickly. And then the final video, which I'll talk about at the end of this one, is maybe one of the most important ones that I provide for you. And I'm, I'm very excited about that one as well. And uh, I think you'll get a ton of good information about it uh, out of that last video. But let's stick around here and get to the personal personal umbrella video. I got to pop that up here so you can see it. Your personal umbrella policy. Let's get to it. What you're going to learn in this today is, is it's the really the final policy type video, the final coverage type video. After we're done with this video, we'll have talked about the basics of all your home and auto uh, policy options. And then we'll get into one last video that talks about well, I'll hold off till the end of this one to figure that one out, but uh, we're going to talk about personal umbrella. But let's review really quickly. I'm going to just quickly go over all the things we've talked about. In the first video, we you know just got the basic parts of an insurance policy, and we also introduced the term coverage limits uh, in that video. And then we dug into the two foundational kinds of home and auto coverage, that's property coverage and liability coverage. We then dug into your auto insurance policy, whether you're in a no-fault state for an, or an at-fault state, you were able to get the information you needed on both of those. And then your homeowner's insurance policy. So we talked about your coverage for your stuff and for your liability as a part of your homeowner's insurance policy. So those are the four videos we've we've gone through up to this point. And uh, now we're gonna dig in here. And of course, I strongly suggested over the course of all these videos that you have your actual home and auto policies with you. I hope you have notes all over them and highlighted ideas you wanna talk to your insurance agent about or questions that you still have. Maybe you went to the Facebook group and asked questions about your policy because after watching the videos you weren't sure sure hopefully your policies are well known to you right now you really understand them in a way that you didn't understand them before that's my hope for you and I know that's the case and I hope you have them in front of you right now now you may have a personal umbrella policy already if you have that then you definitely need to have it in front of you as I go through this coverage if not then then just listen to this and decide if it's something you want to have or not. Uh, let's talk about the disclaimer. Got to say it again. This course is meant to provide very general advice. I am in no way confirming details about your specific insurance policies. Those conversations should happen between you and your insurance advisor. I'm so excited to give you all this information and give you a basic foundation, but obviously I'm not looking at your policies and therefore not advising you specifically about what you have on your policies. Okay, so let's talk about personal umbrellas. Uh, another name for a personal umbrella is an excess liability policy. And if we break those three parts down, it should tell you really what I'm about to talk about. Excess means more. Liability is coverage for bad things that happen to other people. Policy means, you know, it's a coverage that an insurance company offers to take the risk on for a certain amount of, you know, what you do in your life. It adds additional or extra liability coverage on top of your home and auto insurance policies. And this is where people get confused. But an, a personal liability uh, umbrella, a personal umbrella, is on top of both your home and your auto liability coverage limits. So if you look at your home policy, look at that coverage limit your policy will cover up to that coverage limit like we already talked about but if something were to happen that uh you know the cost went above that coverage limit that is where a personal umbrella would come in and that nice thing about the umbrella is it goes over both home and auto so that's really nice um coverage limits on an umbrella usually start at a million dollars and can go up from there so it's a ton of liability coverage you know a million dollars of liability coverage is going to go a long way and so, you know, it offers you a lot of excess liability coverage on top of what you already have on your home and auto policy. 
And like I said, this covers after a claim has reached the liability coverage limit on your regular policy. So I'll give you a quick example. If uh, you know something really bad happens and uh, someone is hurt really, really badly and cannot you know, uh, continue working or something like that, and the claim ends up being $750,000. If your underlying auto policy, let's say it was an auto accident, if your underlying auto policy has $500,000 of liability coverage, then that would pay out first from your auto policy. But you got $250,000 left over on top of what your coverage limits on your auto policy had that needs to be paid out. Without a personal umbrella, that's coming out of your pocket. With a personal umbrella, paid out by your un uh, personal umbrella. It, this this policy really does protect you in the truly worst case scenario. So personal umbrella is not for the small things because it's you know the small things aren't going to hit your liability limits on your on your policy, especially if you took my advice in the last two videos and made sure that you had high liability limits on your home and your auto policy. It is for the truly worst case scenarios. You know, one of the things we deal with in insurance is really, really sad stories. And I'm not going to tell any of those sad stories right here because it's not really what this is about. It's about understanding your coverage. But let me just say that there are incredibly sad stories. And these stories are, are very costly. And, you know, folks who had umbrellas in those situations are glad that they did. And folks that didn't are facing, you know, financial problems for years and years to come, potential bankruptcy, all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's stick with this sad story thing. And uh, the most common personal umbrella claims involve two things. Uh, the first one is is loss of life. So if someone passes away, you know, the the courts are going to be figure out what the, you know, what they would have brought in for their family for the next whatever, you know, 20, 30 years. And so, you know, while someone has passed away, the financial side of it is significant and can easily reach your underlying liability limits and then go into your personal umbrella. And we see that happen a lot when there is loss of life. And then the second one is if someone is disabled, you know, these are often auto accidents. Someone is disabled to the point where they cannot work any longer. So they can't provide for their family in the way they were providing for their family before. And, you know, they need compensation for that and deserve compensation for that. And so those claims can be incredibly expensive as, as they should be. And, um, you know, the, the personal umbrella is going to possibly come in there you know your underlying limits run out and your personal umbrella would hop in there so those two things obviously kind of crummy things to happen we all hope they never happen to us but if they do we want to be prepared that's what insurance is all about and so loss of life or permanent disablement oftentimes auto accidents they, there are certainly stories from homeowners claims but auto is the most common that we see situations where a personal umbrella will come into play Personal umbrellas are usually really inexpensive. For one, they almost always, if they're packaged with your homeowner's policy, are going to give you a discount on your homeowner's policy. So, you know, if a common amount of money for a $1 million personal umbrella is, you know, $120 a year or something like that. So you're talking about 10 bucks a month. And if you get a discount on your home that brings that down by, you know, your homeowner's premium down by, say, 40 bucks, then we're talking about $80 or $7 a month for a million extra dollars of liability coverage over the top of your home and auto policy. So a lot of times personal umbrellas are very, very inexpensive. And that's, you know, an, another great reason to get them. Now, sometimes people will argue that it is too much insurance and that it might even attract personal injury attorneys. So someone's a personal injury attorney, they find out that you have high liability limits and a personal umbrella. Wow, well, we're gonna really go after that policy and see how much money we can get. You know, I, I understand that argument and I think it's a fair argument and one you'll have to decide on when you decide whether or not to purchase a personal umbrella. But the where I, where, where I come from on it is one, your insurance information is nobody's business but you and your insurance agent. So a personal in injury attorney should not know until later in the process what you have for insurance. And so if you know your insurance information is protected properly, then they won't know anyway. So that argument doesn't hold up in that situation. Could an injury attorney dig and find or you know manipulate whatever and find out how much insurance you have? Okay, sure. 
But in the end, isn't it better to, you know, have insurance that, you know, potentially a personal injury attorney could take advantage of than to be in a situation where you're being sued for a a, a significant amount of money or someone has medical injuries that cost a significant amount of money and you don't have coverage for that and you're dealing with the out-of-pocket expense. Um, But this is an argument. I wanted to bring it up because I think it's a fair argument uh, about, you know, how much insurance to carry, whether or not to carry a a, um, a personal umbrella. So, you know, however, in situations I mentioned before, how much insurance uh, you have shouldn't be a factor in the final claim payout, just like I talked about. You know, could it be manipulated? I'm not saying that every situation is exactly this way where people don't know what your insurance is, but they shouldn't know and it shouldn't matter what insurance you have. So it's truly a personal decision about what you're comfortable with. But I feel, I think, you know, as you've heard me say through this last couple of minutes, that at least a million dollar personal umbrella is always a good idea. It's not very expensive. It does protect you in the worst case scenarios. If one of these kinds of things happens to you, it's already going to be, you know, one of the worst things you've ever experienced in your life not knowing if you have enough insurance to cover the cost of the damage done is is not a part of what you want to experience during that. And so having a personal umbrella is going to take care of you for that. So to me, you should have a personal umbrella. You know, a million dollar personal umbrella is a great place to start. There is one endorsement. There's There are some endorsements on umbrellas, but there's only one I'm going to talk about here because it's the most common one. And that is uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage on your umbrella. So you already have uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage on your auto policy. And if you're not sure what that is, go back to the auto auto video and check that out. You can add an additional amount of coverage onto your umbrella for uninsured or underinsured motorists. So it's usually the same limit as your other liability limit. So if it's a million dollar policy, you would have a million dollars for un- and underinsured motorists as well. When would this come into play? Well, somebody hits you, you are injured badly, or your family members are injured badly, and your medical expenses go above and beyond the li- the limits that you have on your auto policy for un- or underinsured motorists. I should have said that that other person that hit you didn't have insurance or didn't have enough insurance. So this, we're really talking about injuries to you and your family. Um, I do believe your medical insurance would come into play if you have medical insurance, although that world is changing constantly. Um, but un- you know, additional uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage would come into play if your auto uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage limits were met in a situation like that. Now, if you're in a no-fault state, this stuff you know doesn't quite matter as much, but um, wanted to throw that in here because this endorsement is in a lot of umbrellas, and it's a question that gets asked as a part of purchasing an umbrella. So I just wanted to let you know what exactly that is. Okay, rookie mistake. This, this is the rookie mistake of this video. Let's see if I get it out properly. It's a little bit hard to, to explain. So not purchasing at least an equal value of liability insurance to your assets. So I want you to think about your financial picture. Think about the value you have in your home if you own one, if you have stocks or anything like that, a retirement fund, you know, all the things you do to build a nest um, financially for your family. I want you to kind of total that up in your head. What's the amount of money that's there? And then look at your insurance policy and make sure that your liability limits on both home, auto, and personal umbrella, if you decide to add one, add up to at least what you have in assets. Now, a lot of a lot of folks, you know, don't have more assets than, um, you know, what your underlying policy provides. But, you know, if you have money that is going up beyond a million dollars, two million dollars, something like that, you want your personal umbrella to add up your liability insurance coverage to at least what the assets are that you have. Super important uh, to do, especially if you have significant assets and uh, it's a rookie mistake if you don't cover it. So if you're sitting on significant assets and you don't have a personal umbrella policy, it is time to stop this video, pick up your telephone, call your insurance agent, make sure that you get a personal umbrella that protects you up to your assets. All right, what we learned, well, we talked about the ultimate in liability coverage, and that is a personal umbrella. It's just additional liability coverage above and beyond your home and auto policy. So let's talk about what's next. Y'all, we made it. 
we got to the end of our metaphorical meal. We set the table. We had our appetizer. We had the two full main courses. And this one we ended with the dessert, which was the personal umbrella. Uh, hopefully you're totally stuffed with new information. And hopefully you're amazed at how much better you understand your home and auto insurance. That's, that's the goal of this course. I hope you're feeling that way. You're looking at your uh, policies, your deck pages sitting in front of you going, man, I, I never knew I could understand this stuff so well. So I, I hope that's how you feel right now. I know it is. And uh, we made it here. Uh, but what's next? We, we got one more really good video in the series, and I think it's, it's as important as any of these other vi videos, um, and that is how to, to handle claims like a pro. So why do you have insurance? Why have we been talking about all this stuff in these five, you know, these five videos we, we've already talked about? We're talking about all this coverage. And, and when you have a claim, when something bad happens, that's when it all really matters. That's when this really matters. That's when all the work you did to make sure that your policy was right comes into play. And what I'm going to teach you is some, some basics in how to handle, handle a claim like a pro. Because, you know, you don't want to be manipulated. You don't want to treat it, be treated poorly. Not everything is covered. We've talked about that over the course of these videos. But if something should be covered and should be covered well, you are going to know how to make sure that happens without being a jerk and without being unkind by just being knowledgeable about how the claim is supposed to work and making sure that the people that are going through that claim with you are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, uh, you know, knowledge is power, and you're going to have a lot of power after having watched our claims like a pro video. All right, and finally, as always, last step in this video is to head over to the Make Insurance Simple Facebook group and get engaged. And no, I don't mean get married, although if you meet the love of your life on our group, we'll, we'll celebrate that for sure. I hope you invite me to your wedding. Um, but what I am talking about is getting engaged in the conversation, asking questions. Go ask questions about personal umbrellas. You know, throw out there, um, you know, how many people have personal umbrellas? Has anyone had a personal umbrella claim? Listen to the story stories that happen on that page and get yourself a sense of whether a personal umbrella is right for you. Of course, you can have conversations about all sorts of other things as well. Okay, great job finishing up the, the coverage videos. Can't wait to get you into that claims video. Really do feel like that's going to be an asset to you if you ever have a claim experience that you have to walk through. I'll see you in the next video.